Hi, my name is Christina and I make historical costumes. And today I wanted to talk about fans as an accessory. Um, they're beautiful and they keep you cool. So probably about three years ago, I started making a whole bunch of fans and I gave them away to my friends. And I kept telling people that I would uh, teach a workshop on how to make them. And I have not done that yet. So um, I figured today I would show you some of the fans that I've made. And since I am going to start trying to make some again, that I would record some of the process and explain what's going on. So the fan that I use most commonly at events is this one. And what I do is I take picture of pictures that I find on the internet, of original fans, and print them out and uh, glue them on these sticks and then I have a fan to take to events that is similar to an original. Uh, this is one I did that is kind of Regency and I did a very pretty little metallic uh, detail here. I think I actually glued on an extra piece of wood because the fan was um, longer than the one I started with. And this is the one I'm the most proud of. So this is Regency era fan. And um, I went in, I actually shaped the sticks, uh, colored them all separately. And on this, on the leaf part, I actually went through and colored in, I printed it, but then I also colored over it to give it a nice smooth look so it didn't look printed and then I actually sewed sequins. <laughs> All that took a long time. I glued them and sewed them on there. So I wanted to uh, give you a little intro to what I'm doing right now. So um, the first thing you want to do is uh, you need sticks for your fan and you can buy fancy expensive ones, you can buy original ones, but what I like to do is I go to Daiso, D-A-I-S-O, let's see I have. Daiso, it's probably backwards, but it's like an Asian dollar store. Everything's $1.50 or more. And I buy these, these fans there. This is actually a white one I got. I don't, I keep this one just for, as a, for a neutral one, but they also sell ones with colored backings. This one has a picture of fans. And I pull them off and we're going to replace them with um, a, the picture of our choice. So that was a neutral color. They also uh, sell a darker color. And what we want are these sticks. These are the part that we want. So they're $1.50. <laughs> nice little thing to start with. And um, I'm going to end up taking them completely apart, painting them, and then only putting on the number of sticks I need because um, a lot of the originals, as you can see, there's not as many sticks. Yeah, they're all separated out. And so you may need a different number of sticks than came on the original. I think I also bought, you can go on Amazon and you can buy, you can buy sticks. So here's one that I got, I think in a pack of 12. And I might, I might put some of them on these. They're more, uh, they're larger and they're also more generic. Okay, so I just got back from FedEx where um, you can do something called print and go, which I found out about this morning and you can um, mail them your document and go there and print it. And what I had been doing in the past was printing things off on a large format uh, printer because you need, I'll show you an example, you need to be able to print it off. And this is 11 by 17 paper. And so most normal home printers don't do that. So what I was doing this morning was creating my digital files. And uh, fortunately, it wasn't as much work as it could have been because <laughs> uh, probably about three years ago when I was making fans, I made a whole bunch of extra, more than I ended up making. I went through, let me find a picture of the fa a fan, an original fan on the internet where someone had taken a really nice clear picture and it would save it. And sometimes I would put it into Photoshop or paint and just clean up the little details on it, um, get rid of the background, 
um, get rid of the sticks, maybe brighten it up. Sometimes even went in and got rid of the little folds. Um, some images need more of that than others. And I had already done that. And the other thing I did was for the back, let's see, this is a good example. For the image, so for the back, I would pull out a color from the front and then tile it so that um, the back of my fan will be kind of the same color as the general front of it. And uh, because I'm not good at writing things out, I'm going to tell you what I did in case you want to write it down. All right, so once you have your fan image that you've uh, pulled off the internet, and you may or may not want to um, clean it up in the background, some of them you don't have to, and if you're printing it at FedEx, you don't really have to worry about conserving ink, so you don't even have to worry about getting rid of the black background if you don't want to. Um, so I made all the files uh, 17 uh, by 11. And let's see, I print everything two-sided. Uh, my first one is the fan crescent. The second one is that color. Um, I had zero, I set the margins at zero because you want it as large as possible. And just for keeping everything the same. Um, then I went in, I made my main image 17 by 8.5 and I took off the uh, aspect ratio lock because I want them all to be as big as possible. I want them all to be that certain height. And with some images, this works better on. Um, let's see what else. Uh, that's all the notes I have. <laughs> oh, when you print it um, and you do it two sided, make sure it flips on the short side and make sure you tell it you want 11 by 17 when you print. Otherwise, only have the little print, which is what happened to me uh, the first time that I tried to print on my home computer. <laughs> Half of it printed. So um, the next step is I'm going to go through and I'm going to try to figure out how to fold these. Some of them already have fold lines, and I will try to stay true to that. Uh, for the ones where they don't have fold lines, I will uh, try to get them uh, I guess as evenly folded as possible. Ideally, this is ideal. You get all of the uh, little folds the same length, um, the same width. And ideally, they would go down to here. But something you can do, what I'm going to do, is when I have these taken off, I actually trim them <laughs> very carefully so that they're narrower. You need to be very careful. But since you have extra sticks, if you make a mistake, it's fine. Um, so that's ideal. Usually on the originals, it's not going to be like that. It's going to stick out. So see that? See that sticks out? But this is also folded along the original fold lines that I could that I could identify um, when I printed it. So I just love this one. It's my favorite. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to quick show you the ones that I printed out. And I love I love printing it there because some of these are dark and I wouldn't want to print them at home. Use up all my ink. This one. And then back you can see is that same color. And you, I think you can kind of see through there. Oh, when I set, so I told you I set this size to eight and a half um, by 17. I actually set the back to nine by 17 if it's just a solid color just to make sure everything is covered and this one slightly different this is a morning fan um came out a little blue i wonder if i should have uh maybe made it grayscale but i think it's beautiful i think i'll put it maybe on uh, some black fan sticks it'd be so pretty see how it comes out so on this one, when I set the back image, I set it to the exact same size as the front because I wanted it to um, match. It matches up. Eh, it's decent. I'm still kind of experimenting, but if it works, it works. Take it out, use it. Um, I have I have had one of my fans break uh, just from so much folding and opening. Um, it did finally split and come apart. So that was unfortunate, but if you're making them yourself, I can't find the file though. <laughs> I want to find the file and make the exact same fan. 
Um, so there's this one I already showed you, the green. Now this one, the nice thing about this is when it was, the picture was taken, it was of a fan that had not yet been folded. So you can see the lines are on there. And image is nice and perfect and flat. That's what you want, as perfect and flat an image as possible and as clear as possible. Well, this one, this image is just so clear. So, and then I've got the pink on the back. All right, so uh, I guess I will move on to the next step. Um, folding them, taking these sticks apart, cutting the sticks, painting them, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So here is one of the pieces that's cut out, and I left a little bit of extra around the edge. Uh, if for some reason things don't line up, and they rarely do, <laughs> you can just fill that extra in with, uh, I use gold. I use like a gold sharpie all around the edges. Um, you can see, let's see, you can kind of see that gold edge right there. And see how that is not even. But we will make it even when we color it in with gold um, towards the end. And the nice thing about this is it's pretty flat, except showing us these little bumps. So I can tell those are folded up, <laughs> up like this. Well, you get the point. Um, and that the other ones are folded back. So right now I'm just going to go through and I'm going to try to fold it on the original fold lines. A first fold you want to make um, as close to the center as possible. And the reason for that is that as you're folding things, um, they can get kind of, kind of slightly off. And when you fold them, we want everything to be this perfect arc. And so each time you do a fold, you can kind of see where it should go. But you also want to line it up so it's about even with the rest of the fan. So as I do that, I'm going to try to be as true as possible to the original lines but also uh, as true as possible to this curve. So I folded all of the, what I'm going to call up bumps, <laughs> um, into the fan, and I'm kind of waiting on the very ends because those are going to be uh, glued onto the sticks I have, and the sticks are going to be a different width than the originals, and I want a little bit of wiggle room there. Um, I still want this beautiful edge to show, so I'll see if I can fold the last bits to make that work. But when you go to do the bottom part, I usually just fold these in half. I don't try to stay true to the lines. I go through and I do, you know, maybe all the up bumps true to the lines, and then I'm going to just fold that in half like that. And the reason for that is that will keep the edge of the fan. Let's see if I can grab one. We'll keep the front edge even. So see this? See how the front edge is even? The back edge is not. Okay, so we got to compromise somewhere. And if the front edge is even, at least, <laughs> at least something's even. So I'm just going to fold the backs and they will be where they will be. So I've started folding. Just to show you, we're just making a little accordion. I just said, okay, let's match those. Press them flat. Let's match those, press them flat, and we're going to just make a little accordion with the whole fan. Okay, I've got my little accordion fan here. Let's see how I did. Okay, the bottom looks pretty good. Now I'm going to trim that is what my next step is. So I'm just checking to see about how much I need to trim off. So it looks like I can trim that pretty even. This one, see the difference between the edges. You don't need to worry about the edges too much, but uh, fortunately, we've got a little bit of play because we can call, we can fill some of this in with uh, the gold pen that we're going to be drawing across the top. Unless you unless you don't mind, if you have maybe the design where it's important that that you maintain that, and then you're okay with the top of your fan just being a little bumpy. Uh, not probably not going to be perfect so these are just decisions <laughs> to make. I uh, can't do this with uh, one hand filming so I just wanted to show you. I'm just going to kind of chop it off <laughs> with the paper scissors of course. I'm just going to try to chop it pretty even and then I'll lay it out and even that out. So I've got my cut top cut off. I'm not terribly happy how much came off but 
So it is. I like to have an even top, and my bottom looks good. And here is my gold sharpie. If that seems to work the best. And I'm basically, let's see if I can do this one handed. Basically, just going to draw. Definitely do this over another sheet because you're going to kind of want to go off the edge and get a nice. You can start in a more reasonable place than I'm starting. <laughs> and what I do, I'll probably trim this again after I'm done filming, but let's say you have a big white spot that you need to cover up. You have a couple options. Uh, you can color it in with gold, <laughs> which I don't mind doing, especially around the edges. Some of these have these beautiful, elaborate, um, like, let's see right here. It's beautiful. And you can also go over this in gold if you want. I think it's very important to go around the edges in gold uh, first, and then I also try to hit the very edges once it's glued on to the sticks, but you can also do some of this other detailing in gold. You can do little dots. Um, you could even sew sequins on. I'm trying to see. I don't know if there's sequins on the original. This one, I think this one was originally silk, so it might even have embroidery. That right there looks like it could even be um, some kind of gold embroidery. Um, yeah, so another option is, and I will probably do this in conjunction with the next step, is I purchased this giant thing of colored pencils just for fan making. <laughs> you can try to color it in with a matching color, uh, which is helpful. And I'm also going to use these, probably not on this fan, because it actually looks really good. Although I might... Sometimes it comes out looking a little grainy and it's obvious that it's printed and you might want to go in and soften some of the edges up, um, you know, on the faces, around the edges of things, just so it doesn't look digital. It looks like it's, uh, you know, painted. So I'm going to continue on with this step, doing some gold, and uh, we'll check in after that. So I just went through and brightened it up a little bit. I could have done it a lot longer, but <laughs> my objective is to make a video for you today, not to color this all day, uh, but you could spend a lot of time and make it really beautiful, make it look like it's all, um, you know, all filled in and done by hand. I'll just see if I can zoom in. I did make their faces a little more visible. I actually just used a mechanical pencil for that. Um, some of the music notes actually, let's see. He went through and wrote over those music notes right there so that um, they look bolder and the lines look continuous and I did a lot of yellow on this part where it's let's see it looks kind of like gold you could also do that in gold that would be so pretty and then of course uh, around the edges there's gold here and up here and uh, after last time I actually went through and trimmed these so they're more even so we've got a nice even a circle along the top, and I just remembered, you can kind of see, I colored in this white spot here, just with some hot pink and brown. If you spent more time, you can make it even more invisible, but honestly, it won't really show. Um, so, there you go. And uh, next is preparing the sticks, and that's when we'll handle uh, the edges also, and how we're going to deal with those, so... Uh, we'll do that next. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, I've half ripped it off to show you. It comes off so easy. I don't know if I can do it. I can probably do it with my hand. So easy. Just pull it off. And then, um, there might be some stuff stuck here, but you can deal with that when you're painting. But, okay, the next task is to pull this off because I want the staves all separated. And, um, I remember long ago I used to do this. Uh, with my, um, like my boning cutters that I used to cut my boning for hoop skirts and stuff. So I'm going to give it a try. I need both my hands. I'm going to give it a try and see if that works. And you only want to cut off just this one side. And then after you get that off, you're going to slip it through here. And you want to keep one of those little nubbins. Because we're going to be needing that when we go to put it back together. And then I'll show you when we're ready to put it back together, we're just going to melt this down and push it down and because there will be a couple left uh it should be fine it's been fine for me in the past so i'm gonna give it a go okay it's off <clears throat> i've got my sticks here in the middle and i've got my end here with the nice little nubbin still in there 
and my other side. And pro tip, um, the original fan, if you measure it, it was four and a half inches. And you'll see that these have a little bump on them. Now if you, I'll just set this on the front to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, this one is almost four and a half inches. Okay, so what that means is that when you go to glue these on, if you're at about four and a half inches, it'll sit really nice right above there. See that? Okay, but if you're not at about four and a half inches, it'll stick up like this and it will look kind of funny. Um, let me see if I did that with one of mine. Um, you can kind of see here. Sticks up a little funny. It's okay though, it doesn't bother me. And this was based on an original whose sticks look like this, so it's fine. Um, see this one? It sits real pretty nice above them. And then what I usually like to do because it looks more like originals. I need these sticks to look like the original. They look better from far away. I <laughs> had a dance. Um, so you can see that I shaped them. I trimmed them. And of course you want to be careful, but you've got extra, so it's okay if some of them get messed up. So, so yeah, just some options with the sticks there, because <laughs> if we all make these out of the same Daiso sticks, they're all going to look exactly the same. So it's kind of nice to uh, change it up every now and then. So I'm going to start on that part now. Okay, so I've cut my sticks. As you can see, I cut off a little, I, I kind of want to call them hips. <laughs> uh, made them straighter. And I counted the little bumps on my fan were 14. So I'm going to need about 14 sticks. And got a couple extra in there. Uh, I cut out more than this and then kept the ones that looked best. So here we are. And I'm just going to paint these with a regular acrylic paint and a paintbrush. So craft time. <laughs> Quick thing I just thought of. Um, <laughs> You actually do not want to paint um, on the inside of the end sticks. So you can see kind of that outside is nice and curved. We do want to paint that and then maybe even decorate it, but don't paint the inside because we're going to be gluing it there. And also, uh, see, I'm trying to remember all this from three years ago. I think I didn't paint um, at least the top part of one of the sides, but then you want the other side painted. Um, because we're going to put glue, it's better if there's not paint. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so the painting is done and I even did some experiments. <laughs> I'll show you. So half of these are flipped over just so you can see on, ha on uh, one side, I don't paint right up here because that's where the glue is going to go. I remember it being a little tricky to keep track of that in the past. So just a reminder, you make sure you put them all on, when you put them back on, we're going to put them all on with these facing the same way, and we're going to make sure that's where we glue them. And then, of course, the other side is all painted. I did a couple coats on these end ones because they're going to be the most visible. And I wanted to do a little pretty design like this, but my ink pens did some experiments here, and it's a mess. <laughs> and uh, they don't all come out looking good. Some of them look, this is my Sharpie that looks so beautiful on the paper. It looks gray on the paint and the wood just kind of absorbs it. Um, I tried some other ones. Uh, I think this one, it came out okay, um, but I'm not comfortable with it. It's a little leaky. I want to wait till these dry more to do anything. Um, this one seemed to work pretty good. That's right there. A little thicker than I like but you can do if you're going to like do little decorative things like that uh, <laughs> that's the sharpie and then with this over it this one obviously shines a little golder um, yeah I had to buy a lot of different pens gold pens to find ones that did what I wanted them to do so just a note there it might not be the first pen you try just be careful it might not be might not come out the way you like so I think I'm gonna go have a cup of tea let this dry and then we will carry on with the next step. 